Hi guys, my name's Loz and you join me today at one of my local club waters. It's a lake that I've been fishing on and off now for quite a few years, but this summer I did quite a lot of time on here and caught some really nice fish. I'll tell you a little bit more about them later, but uh, I'm here today to do an early winter session. We haven't had too many frosts yet and autumn's sort of on the way out. I've chosen this swim for a couple of reasons. It was very kind to me over the summer. I had quite a few fish from here and I've already got my spots figured out. I trickled some bait in this week and a couple of evenings the fish were definitely on it. They were definitely knocking about and, and picking up some bait. So that's given me quite a, quite a lot of confidence. But as I was walking over the bridge, I uh, noticed a few fish milling about in the corner. So I've trickled a little bit of bait in there. So if it goes quiet here, I can just up sticks, even if it's just for an hour or two, and flick a couple of baits down there, see, see if it produces anything. So I'm pretty confident, so let's see how it goes. Right, so I found my spot up against the far margin reeds and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to mark my line so that I can take the line out of the clip when I put the rod on the rest and if I get a fish, all I have to do is make a cast out to open water to the right then reel back in until I find that marker and just clip it back up and hit that spot straight away. So for this session, I've opted for quite a simple rig, a multi-rig, and I've made a few little tweaks, which I'll just take you through now. The reason I've chosen this rig is twofold. Um, I want to be able to present a balanced bait, so I've got a pop-up on there, weighted with a little bit of Klingon putty that's just going to drift down and sit on top of a fine layer of silt that I'm fishing over. What I've also found this season is that from this swim, fishing to these spots, I can quite often get multiple hits of fish. They really seem to just switch on and I can be sure of a couple of bites in quite a short space of time. Now I don't want to be messing around with rigs and things, tying them on the bank in the middle of the night. So the multi-rig just allows me to slide the hook on and off and uh, I can just put a new sharp hook on there real quick, real easy and get it back out there. So at the business end, what I've done there is I've put a small piece of 0.75 silicon over the eye and also a small diffusion camo clinger on the actual shank of the hook. So with that diffusion camo clinger and the silicon tubing, I can keep that D-loop in place and I can be sure that it's out there and it's fishing exactly how I want it to be. For the lead arrangement, I've gone for a weed safety bolt bead. I'm fishing up against some reeds and some snags, so I want to be quite sure that I can lose the lead as soon as I pick up a fish. I moisten the tail rubber just before I slide it on, which just adds to the quick release effect. Above the lead, I've got a short section of Klingon leader. This serves two purposes. One, it's really heavy and it will keep everything pinned down on the lake bed so it's nice and concealed away from the fish. And secondly, fishing up against snags and reeds and things, I don't want to be in any danger of getting cut off or anything. So nice and strong, nice and abrasion resistant. I can be sure that if a fish gets in there, I've got every chance of getting it out. And on the hair, I've got a 15 mil key pop up. Anyway, I'm going to go get some bait in and get the rods on the spots.
So into the first fish of the session and uh, we've probably got about an hour before dark and I was just sat under the uh, under my little recon brolly and uh, tying a few rigs and it just melted off. <laughs> By the time I got to the rod, the tip was right round and it was starting to strip line. I'm fishing fairly tight because I'm up against these snags. And this, yeah, it's putting up a nice account for itself. But nice to have one on. Yeah, now she's woken up a little bit. They do this, they tend to wallow in across the open water and they get under the rod tips and they go berserk. It's good fun though. Yes, there we go, one in the net. Lovely common. Great start. There she is. Lovely mid double common. Quite fat. I'd suspect that she's been getting on the bait. Just getting myself set up for the night under the brolly. We had about an hour of light left and the rod just ripped off out of nowhere rod tip right round, started screaming off. What a lovely common. Definitely recognisable if you're looking at the tail. They're all lovely characters in here. Every single one's slightly different. So there's a few familiar faces. I think I've seen this one before. And she's very, very welcome on quite a cold winter's evening. Lovely. Great start, let's see if we can have another one. So as I said earlier, this is a uh, club water and it's a club that I've been a member of for quite some years now. It's actually where I sort of learnt my carp fishing trade as it was. Um, me and a friend used to fish down here every free hour we got and yeah, eventually managed to catch a few out of here. I haven't fished it so much in the past few years, but this summer I actually made quite an effort to catch some of the ones that have avoided me all this time. And I've had a really good year, it's been good fun, and I've really got amongst them some familiar faces and some new ones as well. This was a great one actually, um, sort of late, late autumn, come down for a nice session, really got stuck in amongst them, but every single fish was a common, and as lovely as they are, and I love catching them, there was just a couple of scalies that I really want to tick off the list, so I was just wading through them, wading through them, and then on the Saturday it turned out to be a blazing hot day, and I had no floater gear and they were all up on the surface so after scrabbling around in the back of uh, my brolly I found some bread crust from last night's BLT and yeah I managed to nab one on that and really lovely scaly one that I hadn't had before so I was chuffed to bits with that session that was that was a really good really good result this is a this is quite an elusive one the koi um, I caught it way back when back in the day when I was uh, learning learning my trade and I never really got sort of decent photos or anything of them. In fact, I think I lost them. So it was a it was a real nice surprise when when that sort of showed up in front of me. And this well, this this is the sort of fish that I'm really chasing in here. Again, it's a fish that years ago I'm I'm pretty sure that I've had on the bank. But you know how it is. It's a long time ago, and it was just lovely to see it in the net once more and get some really really lovely photos for the album there's no giants in here i think the, the lake record's only about 25 26 pound but they are fantastic fish and they'll always keep me coming back there's always a surprise in here and although they're not massive they're just beautiful creatures and they're the kind of fish that i really love fishing for but it's nice to have one already uh, we got off to a great start earlier with that common Hopefully we can get amongst some of them scaly ones and it'll, oh, it'll just be a dream if I have one that I haven't caught before, but that might be asking a little bit too much. But we'll see what happens. Well, morning. Uh, it's 
been light for a little while now and I was just dozing, just deciding whether to uh, trickle a little bit more bait in or have a rechuck and it just melted off again. And uh, yeah, got me out of bed. We were joking last night though. I was just going, 8.15, 8.15 on the dot. I just text him going, um, well, it's about that time, mate. Rod screams off. Yeah, like clockwork. Yeah, great start to the morning. Let's, uh, let's have a look at her. Great sport on a cold winter's morning. So we've just got that fish back, and uh, nice to get off to a good start. Nice little common to kick the day off. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about bait now. The bait I've been using is called the Key. It's been in development for a long time now. Gary and several other bait boffins have been down Nash Bait, and they've been cooking this up for a good couple of years now, and it's been tested quite strongly for the past year with some really, really good results. So the bait itself, it is sort of the concept is derived from you know the old days with the HNV baits, the high nutritional values that that really had a massive impact on the carp scene, and everyone switched on to the fact that these HNV baits really were getting the results. And this is just taking that one step further. So as you can see, I've got a bit of it here, and it's a really really soft bait. The reason being that well, basically it's full of active ingredients, your active enzymes, amino acids, that sort of thing, and by boiling it to death you're just taking all the goodness out of it. The way I've been fishing it recently now that the temperature is starting to drop I'm reducing the amount that I'm trickling in. I've, I've mentioned earlier that I've been baiting all week and that is literally a handful that sort of size on each spot. The reason being that this is such a rich bait that you can only feed it at sort of 50% you would a normal bait. You just keep it trickling in on the spot and that just draws them in and yeah, it's it's been a winning combination for me this this year it's been deadly I can't recommend it highly enough so it's the end of the session and yeah can't complain it's been a good one we had a nice little result with those two commons lovely fish especially on a cold winter's weekend so very happy with that they both came off of the spots that have been baiting all week with the key it's a nice little bit of confidence there and now it's just time to get home and enjoy the rest of the weekend so I'm just gonna pack up and I'll see you next time.